so upon finishing uh, the actual recording, uh, we can proceed to the analysis. Uh, the software automatically opens the first uh, analysis window, uh, that's summary chart. Summary chart includes the uh, chart of uh, heart rate trend and uh, exercise trend. Also, we can see uh, blood pressure marks here. By default, we see the averaged uh, heart rate curve. So, uh, we can see uh, the overall trend, but without the details, uh, for example, some small uh, change uh, due to artifacts or arrhythmia. Uh, that's why I'm switching to the simple view. And now I can see these different um, deviations from the uh, main uh, heart rate line and the most interesting for me now that's uh, quite a big uh, spike that may be caused by uh, extrasystole. To check if uh, this is extrasystole or not I can double click here by my mouse and yes actually see that this is uh, a supraventricular extrasystole and the software detected it and marked uh, differently by color and the uh, a QRS complex uh, name, uh, subproventricular. Uh, in case uh, this information is important and I want to include it in the uh, report, I have an option to select the ECG, then uh, right mouse click and select uh, mark for printing to print uh, afterwards or include in the report or print right now. For example, now I prefer to print right now. Uh, here I can select some settings, like for example, number of columns, two columns, that's good. Um, landscape or album view, uh, image grayscale and uh, a graph paper, good. So I can preview what I can have in my printout. Yeah, it's quite good. I can see our extra system here. Uh, standard graph paper and what is important uh, why I prefer printing uh, with this option because this printout is uh, actually meteorologically correct uh, in this case uh, the software doesn't use any intermediate uh, options like uh, maybe some text editors or something like this and uh, this picture will not be distorted so one millimeter on the graph paper will be exactly one millimeter in the printout and one millivolt will be uh, exactly one millivolt uh, in meteorological um, uh, sense. So it means that uh, it will be possible to measure this ECG by a simple ruler after printing out. So uh, now I can say OK and print um, right now or uh, save it as a file. Uh, I would prefer PDF, uh, for example, and okay, leave it on the um, desktop for printing after that or uh, for uh, sending via email or something like this. Okay, uh, if I finished with this extra system, I can double click my left, uh, left mouse button and come back to the analysis window. Uh, nothing interesting for me here anymore. Okay, I can check this uh, thing, but it's more like um, artifacts, so no actual uh, arrhythmias here. Okay, I can come back. Next analysis window is uh, average QRS complexes. So the software average, uh, or in some software you can uh, see the name like uh, median complexes. Uh, it's actually the same. So we have some uh, subgroup of complexes that's overlapped uh, one on each other and uh, then uh, provided for review. Uh, with this averaging, we reduce uh, movement artifacts or uh, other noises and um, can get more clear picture of a real ECG. Uh, on the other hand, we can have some errors in the analysis algorithm. For example, here uh, the mark of the end of QRS complex was 
not correct, but I can correct it uh, by dragging the, with the mouse. Uh, also, if I see that uh, the change, for example, like this, it's almost um, one millimeter of uh, ST depression, and that may be confusing uh, when another specialist uh, view this uh, on the uh, graphics or in the report. So I can I have an option to mark these uh, average complexes as artifacts, so to exclude them from the analysis. If I see that something may be suspicious of a real uh, ST depression, I can again double click this uh, curious complex and check what's happening on the real uh, ECG. If uh, there is uh, actual ST depression, I can print out or mark it as a ST depression or so on. Okay, I can come back, no ST depression there, really. Uh, and but if uh, some uh, curious complex is interesting, I can mark it to report for printing for including in the final uh, report on this test. Uh, the software also provides me with the um, selection of uh, four or five standard curious complexes in the beginning of the test, maximum ST deviation during the test, uh, ST uh, during the maximum workload and uh, some recovered data. Again, here, uh, for example, I see that this uh, complex is uh, artifact, so I want uh, to mark it as artifact and include in the report something more um, neutral. Okay. It's not. Oh, that's good. Oh, not. oh that's better. Uh, maybe next one. So I can select which one I want to include. So not to uh, confuse the specialist if uh, we have uh, a picture of uh, significant ST depression, but really this depression was due to just motion artifacts or uh, averaging algorithm artifact. Okay, so uh, now I have complexes that will be displayed in my report and nothing uh, problematic here. So I can proceed to another uh, analysis window, the trends window. Okay, I switch off this integral. Uh, two main reasons to see this trend window is to see ST dynamics and ST slope. So if I see um, uh, the blue marked part, it's uh, ST depression, uh, red marked ST elevation. And this orange line shows if this uh, ST depression, for example, upsloping, uh, horizontal or downsloping. As you know, uh, horizontal or downsloping ST depression is more significant uh, as uh, ischemic uh, sign, and upsloping ST depression may be just uh, um, uh, overload artifact uh, with uh, patients, for example, with high blood pressure or in trained persons. So it you should pay more attention and um, should be more cautious interpreting these upsloping ST depression data. Uh, here, for example, I see some uh, parts that may be suspicious on depression, like this, uh, and if I want to check if this is real, again, I can double click on this um, part and the software will transfer me to the proper uh, native uh, ECG. Okay, I don't see actual depression here, so by double click I can come back. Another option that available here uh, is uh, measurement of other parameters of the ECG and I would uh, tell a couple of words about maybe uh, QT uh, dynamics. Uh, for example, QT corrected and I, I would better show just maybe V5 uh, lead, because you know that uh, actually we have one QT. Yeah, uh, if you see that QT is not uh, in the, uh, some maybe chart or um, trend is not in the direct view, you can drag it by right mouse, holding right uh, mouse button uh, to position the graphics screen better. Okay, so now I see the QT corrected 
dynamics and you see that the line is almost horizontal it means that the correction formula in this case buzzed uh, is correct yeah? uh, so this patient uh, has a predictable um, QT dynamics no, no signs of any um, long QT syndrome uh, when we can see the uh, dynamics of QT uh, cha um, different from the normal. For example, uh, QT is um, shortened too much during the test or uh, not uh, shortened in a um, uh, proper way. Uh, also, we can see the natural QT uh, without correction. You see that during the test, uh, when uh, heart rate is increasing, the QT is uh, shortening and then during uh, recovery it is elongating back. So that's normal QT dynamics. Next uh, window is important when we see uh, some change that's suspicious to be uh, ischemic ST depression, but we need uh, more information to confirm our hypothesis. For example, if we see just uh, ST depression without additional clinical signs um, like uh, uh, angina pain or um, some dyspnea from the patient. So um, in this case uh, we need to decide if this ST depression just um, some feature of the ECG or really ischemic uh, stuff. In this case, uh, this uh, loop graphic uh, may help us. Uh, what, um, what does it mean? We have a uh, vertical axis uh, dedicated to uh, ST segment change, uh, but pay attention that depression is going up here, and uh, horizontal axis is heart rate. Uh, red line on this graph uh, is uh, ST, ST dynamics during exercise and green line uh, ST dynamics during recovery. What uh, we see here? We see here uh, actually no um, meaningful dynamics because a red line is going almost horizontal. Yeah? And so we don't see any dependency between ST depression, ST dynamics and heart rate. Uh, in case of real ST depression, what we would uh, see? We would see the trend from uh, bottom left to uh, upper right corner. So with increasing of the heart rate, ST depression would increase also. And the second feature that characteristic for the ischemic depression, that the recovery period would go um, above the uh, exercise line. So we would, uh, we would see green line above the red line. Uh, why it happens? That so-called uh, hysteresis. Um, the recovery of depression is delayed. So for example, if we see, um, uh, don't see uh, ST depression on uh, 120 beats per minute during exercise, but only on 130 during recovery uh, we would probably see ST depression on 122 so it means that uh, the recovery is delayed and this is typical dynamics for uh, ischemic depression um, I need to uh, repeat that here we don't see any uh, ischemic like change so we can proceed to tables view here we can see all the uh, test protocol with uh, timing, uh, exercise level, uh, exercise level recalculated to METS. What is important uh, if, uh, for example, we have uh, our patient next time uh, performing not bicycle test but uh, treadmill test or we have previous test uh, performed on a treadmill, uh, it, um, it is easier to compare data using these METS. It's not very, ex uh, not exactly 100% uh, the same, um, but that's just uh, some reference point to compare two tests. Uh, also, heart rate during every stage, uh, blood pressure measured, um, double product calculated from um, systolic blood pressure and uh, heart rate. 
Uh, also, chronotropic index that shows if we have, if our patient have has uh, uh, chronotropic competence. In this case, uh, it's all, uh, in the end, it's 0 0.96. It's almost normal. So, and another point why we don't expect chronotropic incompetence here that maximum heart rate, peak heart rate, is uh, above 100 percent of age predicted one. So it means that uh, this patient performed um, a maximum heart rate that exceeds predicted level. So n n no uh, reasons to think about any chronotropic incompetence here. And comments, for example, we included Borg scale data here, and uh, this data is depicted in this comments column, uh, like would be depicted other comments uh, if we um, performed commenting during the test. Uh, ST uh, segment uh, view. Uh, so we see uh, the measurement results, but that's mostly for geeks. Uh, in practical, um, in real practice, for example, I rarely uh, check this data because I have printouts, I have real ECG, and I have uh, the description uh, of the recording. Now, in the end, uh, we have also we can come back to the record view uh, where we can review again uh, our uh, all our ECG it is saved completely uh, this view may be used just in the beginning of the analysis or afterwards it's up on you uh, what this windows allows uh, you can review ECG you can print out ECG like we did it with the extra systole. Uh, you can uh, switch to the point of interest just clicking by uh, left, making left mouse click. Uh, also uh, we see uh, average complexes uh, synchronized with the uh, real ECG view and ST map that shows uh, ST elevation and depression in such a circular um, uh, graphics. Uh, this uh, view is actually quite convenient because you see that here the um, standard leads are depicted uh, in a Cabrera fashion. So we see anatomically adjacent uh, leads uh, nearby. Uh, so when we think about okay if this depression or elevation uh, is in adjacent leads or not. Uh, here, in a standard view, we need to um, jump, for example, oh, it's uh, lead 1 and next lead is AVL or minus AVR. It's not convenient. Uh, here we see uh, these leads uh, nearby. Uh, so that's Cabrera convention. Unfortunately, it's not in uh, use in standard TCG. Uh, despite the recommendation to use this uh, way of showing ECG. Okay. Uh, one thing that I want to show you also is a view window uh, and events. Uh, everything that happens during the recording uh, is called events, so blood pressure measurement, some workload change, or uh, events detected by the software. For example, here we see uh, this list and we can quickly um, get to the point, for example, if I want to see what happened uh, during blood pressure measurement or during the um, exercise level change, yeah? or I can see uh, here the software shows me suprament supraventricular QRS so that's again this extra systole we already reviewed. Uh, but you see that it's easy to jump to the event and uh, to review, to print out, or perform some other uh, measurement or any other actions. So uh, in the end, we are going to conclusion wizard. Um, so, and first, we select um, we performed diagnostic test because our patient uh, has some complaints. Okay. So then we need to select test abort reasons. Uh, 
in this particular case we achieved a maximum heart rate. So another reason would maybe achievement of 85%. Uh, okay, clinical criteria. Uh, in case we have clinical criteria, you can select from the list or uh, type um, any, um, anything we want uh, about our patient, about a patient condition, symptoms or signs of, for example, is, uh, ischemic character, but not in this case. Again, ECG criteria, uh, we can select from some list of um, meaningful arrhythmias, um, conduction blocks, or, for example, we can describe ST depression, uh, entering some deviation in millivolts, and selecting leads with the depression. Yeah, it's um, so manual function. Okay, we can do this, but uncheck. Don't have ACG criteria now. Then, uh, uh, ergometry indices. Uh, this block is automatically marked by the software. Uh, it says blood pressure response and heart rate recovery. That's two important parameters because uh, systolic blood pressure response and recovery are uh, important as, uh, for example, this parameter may be uh, a predictor of uh, uh, high blood pressure, uh, arterial hypertension in the future. And the heart rate recovery uh, also um, in, uh, a risk factor because it characterizes uh, um, vagus nerve response to the abortion of the exercise. Uh, so in case of uh, inadequate uh, parasympathetic uh, activation, uh, we can see uh, delayed um, heart rate recovery and uh, uh, or sometimes we can see also arrhythmias during this period and these arrhythmias are important because they um, um, indicate the higher risk, cardiovascular risk of this uh, patient. Uh, tolerance to a physical exercise assessed according to the maximum uh, workload achieved. So we have 100 watt, even 125 for a short period of time, so we can mark it high. Uh, Pre-test probability that was uh, assessed before the test and here we describe the uh, result. In our case, we didn't have any ECG, ST, you know, uh, ST segment changed, so we can mark the test as negative. Um, Mm, mm, the test without assessment, that uh, position that we should avoid, uh, because, for example, why we can mark this point, uh, for example, when we do not achieve 85% uh, of predicted heart rate and don't have any clinical signs or symptoms uh, in the patient or don't have any ECG signs, so we cannot tell uh, that the test is negative. So, because uh, the sub-maximal each predicted heart rate uh, was not achieved. But in our case, we have maximum and we don't have any ST segment depression, so the test is negative. Uh, according to these uh, clinical and ECG results, we can have uh, finally the risk assessment. So, we can mark absence of chest pain during the test. Uh, maximum ST depression, here we have automatic results, but uh, in most cases we need to correct because the software may mm, uh, mark non-significant depression. And in the end we have mm, quite a good prognosis, positive prognosis for the patient and very low uh, post-test uh, probability. So our test reduced the probability of coronary artery disease from medium to very low. And uh, finally, we have aerobic capacity. For sure, yeah, this uh, parameter is better measured by direct CPET test. But in case we don't have the equipment, we don't have the software, uh, we can use this calculation based on some uh, formulas uh, published in uh, literature. So um, it's better than nothing anyway. And here, a view to max is 25.5. That's much higher than the uh, risk, most risk cutoff, like uh, 14 or 15 uh, milliliters uh, per kilo per minute. And the Weber functional class is A, so it's uh, the 
It means that the uh, aerobic capacity of this patient almost uh, pers um, pers uh, pre uh, preserved. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, and the Weber functional class is A, uh, so it's, um, it means that the aerobic capacity of this patient is uh, almost preserved. Okay, now we need uh, the last thing, uh, the report in uh, printable form. It contains uh, some textual information about the patient, about the test results, uh, charts, so, um, graphical information, so a summary chart, the table, summary table, ST segment chart, and uh, average curious complexes that we marked during our review. So all of this uh, may be uh, printed out uh, or saved uh, as PDF document. For example, we can select an option report, export to PDF and uh, select, uh, in, in this case it will be a desktop. Uh, I can save this exercise stress test and uh, then um, send it via email or um, do something interesting with this um, electronic format. And also uh, pay attention that this report is uh, like a textual document, so you can f perform editing. If you see something, for example, this line, empty line, I can delete it or I can copy text, pass text or type some my additional information uh, right here in this uh, editor window. So. And finally, we need to save our change and we can close the uh, recording.